Good afternoon. On behalf of the ISO, I'd like to welcome you to the follow-up call to discuss the March 2019 tariff clarifications as part of our recurring tariff clarifications filing process, as you know. My name is Jimmy Bashar with the ISO Stakeholder Affairs Group, and I'm also joined by my colleagues. Dave Delpart from Operational Readiness. Good afternoon. This is Andrew Ulmer with the ISO. Appreciate it, guys. Uh, as with all of our stakeholder processes, uh, all related material for this webinar can be found on the stakeholder processes webpage, located on the drop-down menu under the Stay Informed tab on our website. And then, of course, you would notice this recurring process under the section labeled recurring processes. Uh, in addition, calls and webinars are recorded for stakeholder convenience, allowing those who are unable to attend to listen to the recordings after the meetings. The recordings will be publicly available on the ISO webpage for a limited time following the meetings. Of course, the recordings and any related transcriptions should not be reprinted without the ISO's permission. And lastly, of course, uh, we'll be pausing for questions throughout periodically. If you have any questions, please press pound two to enter the queue. And for everyone, of course, please state the name of the company that you represent. And uh, with that, I'll hand it over to Andrew. Hi, good afternoon. This is Andrew Ulmer with the ISO's legal group. Um, First, thank you very much for joining us on a, a Friday afternoon, especially uh, for those folks who are not in the Pacific time zone. Um, and I also wanted to simply offer some apologies for rescheduling the call. Um, uh, largely, that was because of my schedule. I was both uh, uh, called to jury duty um, and then also um, battling the flu. But, but both are over, and um, we're hoping to reengage on the tariff clarification process. Uh, phase one of this, um, we talked on our last call about um, pursuing some uh, tariff clarifications in the near term and then uh, in the third quarter maybe pursuing a, an additional list of tariff clarifications. Um, but we wanted to move forward with those that we would had collected and thought were relatively straightforward. Um, and we discussed those on a call. Um, previously, um, I guess last month, or earlier this month, um, but uh, uh, we did receive um, some comments on that call, some questions, and we did receive some written comments on the list of tariff clarifications we issued. And what we wanted to do was take the opportunity to um, address those comments and maybe have a further conversation and answer any questions. Um, and I'll start by simply saying that we had one set of comments in writing that we received from the six cities. And those are posted on our tariff clarification um, stakeholder webpage. Um, the, the comments involved um, some suggested changes to uh, several sections, um, which were relatively um, minor. It pointed out, I think, some errors that were embedded in our first draft. And for those, um, we are going to uh, make correct and corrective uh, uh, or corrected uh, changes to the to the tariff clarification language we published. And what we're planning to do is republish um, the red line tariff sheets for stakeholders to review, and then also um, republish a matrix of of that explains the tariff changes, um, but also addresses comments that we've received. So we'll address each of the comments we received from six cities in writing in that matrix. But we thought it would be a good use of time today to talk through a, a substantive comment we received from six cities. And um, it echoed back to some questions we had on the earlier call with respect to proposed changes to section uh, 42.1.5. Um, and that, that is a tariff section that um, today gives the ISO um, some authority to take steps to meet applicable reliability criteria. Um, and those steps include, in real time, um, contracting for generation um, or ancillary services. Um, and what we were trying to do in the tariff clarification was to um, make clear that um, in, in real time, to meet applicable reliability criteria, that we um, will take steps um, to negotiate uh, contracts um, for ancillary services or unloaded capacity from time to time. 
but to specify what the price would be, um, because as, as it's written there uh, today, there is no price specified in the tariff, but we thought it would be appropriate to make clear what our business practice would be um, in the tariff in terms of the rate, and that would be, unless otherwise specified, the applicable 15-minute market ancillary service marginal price. Um, and the reason for that is that when we go back to uh, um, how we procure ancillary services, we generally do it in the day ahead time frame where we procure uh, a target of 100% of our ancillary service needs. But from time to time, um, in the real time, we find uh, um, that our ancillary service needs change for any number of reasons. Um, and if we need to procure incremental ancillary services through our real-time market process, um, which is done through the 15-minute market, we, we use that, that platform to secure um, additional or incremental ancillary services through the market. But there are times, and, and literally in the real time, um, after the opportunity to use the 15-minute market has passed, that we find ourselves needing to secure additional ancillary services capacity or unloaded capacity to make sure we can meet the um, um, WAC reliability standard um, with respect to uh, maintaining adequate um, adequate reserves. Um, I'm sorry, the NERC WAC reliability standards with respect to maintaining adequate reserves. And you know, it, the the I'll, we'll run through a, a short example, and, and maybe that will help. And then maybe we can open up a call for questions. But um, if we find ourselves in the operating hour, the last opportunity to secure um, um, ancillary services through the 15-minute market for that operating hour happens um, it happens in a market run that begins seven and a half minutes after um, after the operating hour begins. And if we find ourselves at the 15-minute mark and something occurs on the system, um, whether it's you know, additional supply or the loss of a unit, and we need to take actions to meet applicable reliability criteria for that hour, we, we, we will, under this tariff provision, take steps to secure that ancillary service capacity. And our view is that to do that, um, we, we, we should have a price that the tariff specifies. And from our perspective, it makes sense for that price to be the applicable 15-minute market ASMP, which then, if that is the price, there's already embedded in the tariff um, an allocation uh, methodology for, for that, for, for, for that uh, price that gets paid um, to a resource. Um, so we received some comments from six cities asking the question, gee, is this tariff uh, language really just more a restatement of more specific tariff authority that governs reliability must run contracting and capacity procurement mechanisms? And, and the answer to that is, is no. It's, it's additional tariff authority on top of that. Um, the reliability must run contracting authority obviously happens far in advance of real time um, and is meant to address um, largely a reliability need or some other needs that are specified in the tariff. Um, and our capacity procurement mechanism um, is really meant as a, um, as a tool to address a number of specific issues, a shortfall in resource adequacy capacity, uh, a significant event that it happens on the system, um, and we've only really relied on that uh, lever once, um, is my recollection, with the, the loss of Senator Ofrey. Um, if we have an exceptional dispatch of a resource, to exceptionally dispatch a resource for energy, we can have a, a capacity procurement mechanism designation that occurs in connection with that exceptional dispatch. Or currently, if, if we see a, a resource that may face a risk of retirement, um, we, we have some provisions in the future. We have some provisions to um, use a capacity procurement mechanism. But, but the, the language in Section 42.1.5 really address, addresses this, this real-time need that might arise, where we do need to take some out-of-market action in order to secure um, sufficient unloaded capacity to make sure we're carrying sufficient reserves to meet meet the standards. Now, I would say, uh, then I'll maybe um, allow uh, uh, stop the, the the monologue and allow some time for questions. I would say that there could be instances where, in 
in reaching out to secure um, ancillary services in real time that uh, that results in a capacity procurement um, um, mechanism, uh, CPM designation. Um, that's possible. Or that we may need to exceptionally dispatch a resource in order to ensure that there's unloaded capacity available. Um, so the two are not unrelated, but um, our view is that the language in Section uh, 42.15 is a, uh, a statement of additional authority, not simply a restatement generally of the authority set forth in Sections 43A um, and uh, 41 of the tariff that relate to CPM designations and reliability must run contracting. So I'll stop there and see if there are any um, further questions um, or, or concerns from anyone, um, any of the stakeholders who have joined the call. And I'm hoping that Dave Delpark, who's joined us from Operation Readiness, um, can also help um, answer any questions that, that arise. So, Jimmy, I'll turn the call back to you. All right. Um, Lauren, I'm not seeing any questions on my end unless you're seeing something on your end. We did just get a caller in the queue. Okay, great. Hi, this is Meg McNall with Thompson Coburn for Six Cities. Um, thanks, Andrew, Hi. for um, responding to our comments on 42.1.5. Um, I, I think our concern had not been so much that we thought the language there was like duplicative of other procurement mechanisms. I think the concern was more about sort of what is this, what is this um, procurement me mechanism in 42.1.5 used for um, and why is it needed sort of beyond the the existing um, methodologies that you have in other parts of your tariff? I, and I confess I'm still yes. not totally following that um, part of your okay. explanation. Yeah, that's, that's fine. I mean, the, the language has been there for, for many years, even predating the implementation of the nodal markets right. um, in 2009. Um, but, but we think about, I mean, it's, it's, it's additional authority that provides our operators with a tool, if they absolutely need it, to take some out-of-market steps um, to ensure that we're carrying adequate reserves or potentially um, adequate generation um, to, to serve load. Um, in its, in its, uh, you know, in, in, in stepping back to say, okay, well, why can't you do that in advance of real time? Um, the answer is generally we can. Um, we use the day ahead market uh, platform to ensure we secure our forecasted needs for ancillary services. But if those forecasts change, we then have a real time market mechanism to, to do so. But there are instances where during an operating hour, the real time market platform is no longer available to the operators to secure capacity for that operating hour. And if something happens on the system that requires the operators to take immediate steps, quite literally in real time, not just associated with um, the 15 minute market, in order to ensure that there are sufficient reserves on the system for that hour, um, then they looked to this section, 42.15, as the foundation for allowing them to take that out-of-market um, action. Now, it happens rarely, um, but we thought it seemed to be a good, a, 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 it seemed to be missing um, a clear statement of what, what the rate would be paid for that type of um, capacity procurement, if you will, or ancillary service procurement. Um, and so that was the point of the clarification to, to specify that rate um, would be the 15-minute market applicable ASMP, um, and then that would then, um, through our market systems, um, be allocated out to scheduling coordinators. Okay, so it's allocated, and that was going to be my next question. It's the cost allocation for this is to scheduling coordinators for? It would be just like any other 15-minute um, uh, market 
ASMP that gets paid to a resource. So it would be based on your ancillary services obligation. Um, okay. If you've self-provided your entire ancillary service obligation, then you wouldn't get an out. You wouldn't. You wouldn't get a um, an obligation. All right. And you said. Um, it would be based on that. Thank you. Um, and you said that typically this authority is, is rarely exercised or that procurement, procurement pursuant to this rarely occurs. Do you have a ballpark estimate of kind of how often this would come up? Yeah. I mean, I, again, I'll say rarely, and then I'll, I'll make one comment and then turn it over to, to Dave, and maybe he can find a little bit about that. Um, you know, it, it's needed when we're – we're already into the operating hour, and and for that hour, we're beyond the opportunity to use the 15-minute market. So we're after seven and a half minutes in, something happens significant enough for us to need to secure additional reserves for that hour. Um, so that's a relatively rare occurrence, but I will let Dave, you know, maybe provide some more color in terms of how often, you know, this, this generally might happen. So I, I review the logs every day, and I would say at the most it's three times a month maybe. I mean, of course, that's, that's just the ballpark, but there's many months when we don't do not – that we don't have to do this at all. Um, okay. I lost my train of thought there. So it, 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 it's very rare, and most of the time the duration on this may be 15 minutes to 30 minutes in, in length. So as soon as we can get get whatever that new requirement is or uh, get the information we need into the market and the market starts taking care of whatever that issue was, that first 15-minute market that's able to run and correct the situation, then we will we don't do this anymore. So it's, just, mm -hmm. it's, it's very infrequent and it's for short duration. Okay. Right. If, if you're if, in the 15-minute market, if you're looking ahead to the next trading hour, that 15-minute market starts to run, I guess, probably at about minute 22 and a half of the mm -hmm. current trading hour. So it's, 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 if, if it's known by that time, um, then that 15-minute market run for the top of the hour is going to catch it, and, and we're going to secure additional capacity, ancillary service capacity to that market run. Um, okay. If it's not caught until the next – market run, that, that would occur 37 and a half minutes into that um, operating hour for the second 15-minute interval of the subsequent operating hour. So it seems like, you know, in most instances, we're talking about a 15 to 30-minute maximum. Um, right, right. If you okay. Contract. So capacity. All right. Um, this is helpful. I don't have any um, additional uh, questions. Right now, um, I think we'll need to think about this a little bit internally. But appreciate that's, the explanation. That's fair. That's fair. And you know, this is this is something that we're not, you know, we're 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 like I said, we're planning on reposting our language. We're planning on putting out a uh, another matrix to explain the rationale for each of the changes and address the comments we received. So, if there are additional questions, or you know, please feel free to reach out to us or. Okay. Um, if Bonnie wants to give us a call, that's fine as well. Um, okay. You guys know where to reach us. Uh, we're happy yeah. to try to, to address them. And obviously we'll, you know, explain this in our transmittal letter ultimately. But at this point, I think we are not anticipating a filing, um, you know, no, no, no sooner than, than, than mid-April, like probably in the second half of April. Okay. Uh, yeah, I was – I joined the call a minute or two late, and so I didn't know if you had um, shared the timing for submitting these to FERC. No, okay. All right. I don't have anything else. Thanks again. Jimmy, I don't know if there are other questions. Uh, thanks, Bonnie, Andrew. I don't see anything else, uh, Lauren, unless you're seeing something in your end. That's it. Well, that, that was the scope of what I wanted to cover today. Um, and like I said, we, we do anticipate some further postings in this initiative. Um, and then um, – they just referenced. I think our our target now is to make a a submission to the to to FERC um, to make these clarifications uh, in the middle or second half of April. Um, but I would expect we should 
probably post uh, additional uh, materials on the stakeholder webpage um, by the second half of next week. All right. Um, thanks, Andrew. And uh, with that, uh, this concludes the call. Uh, we, you know, we did record this. That typically becomes available within the next couple of business days, so look out for that as well. Uh, appreciate your time, folks, uh, on a late Friday, as Andrew mentioned, and uh, we'll have that material posted um, once we are able to, uh, to get to it by next week. Um, so thanks so much, and uh, have a great rest of your day. This concludes our conference. Thank you for using AT&T Event Conferencing Enhanced. You may now disconnect.